So welcome to another edition of BombCast. Today, uh, I have the pleasure of having Janice Clifton from Abbey Carpet Unlimited in Napa. And Janice is somebody that's been in the industry a long time and is close friends with Ron, who I bought the store from in El Cerrito. And I wanted to get her insights into the business and into, you know, talk a little bit about herself. Um, and hopeful, I'm, what I'm hoping is, is that through that, um, the listeners in our industry would get some insights and maybe some guidance from somebody that probably forgot more about what's going on in the industry than most of <laughs> us are going to learn yeah. as we as we go go through the next year. So, um, welcome, Janice. Thanks for making the time. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about you? Um, sure. Good morning, everybody. Um, I came into the industry. We, I bought the store 35, 36 years ago with my dad, who worked with me for a little while, maybe two or three years. Um, he was close to retirement when we bought the store, and he decided it was a good time to retire. Anyway, so I came into the store not knowing anything about flooring, but knowing a lot about accounting because my uh, background was working for CPA firms for 12 years. So um, I knew enough to stay out of trouble financially, but really didn't know anything about flooring. So I proceeded to badger every single salesperson that came in my door <laughs> from every carpet mill. And back then it was mostly carpet um, to learn more about how, what the carpet, what you sell, what's good, what's bad. And then just went forward from there. Started with uh, two employees, uh, two salespeople and one warehouse person. And we are currently at around 18 employees. And did you, was your father in the furniture business? Yes, he was in the furniture business. So when we did flooring, he knew a little bit about it because some furniture stores sold a little flooring, but he didn't really know much about flooring. Tell us about, if, if you would, a little bit about interests outside of business for you. Um, interests outside of business mainly would be my family. Um, I have grandkids that are very active in sports and watching them. I'm really active in our church and I'm active in music. I play the piano not as often as I'd like to, but really? um, I have done a lot of uh, music type things. Did you play that as a child growing yes. up? Yes. Actually, in high school, I earned my spending money by teaching piano and even as I got older and was working for CPA firms, I would teach some kids piano for extra money at that point. So wow. that was kind of interesting. I didn't know that. I um, played saxophone through school and uh, remember having private lessons to, to, but not give them for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's interesting. So how, have you, how, is, so how has the industry at, from your point evolved or maybe not? Uh, from, from the from the beginning, I mean, your dad's store was, I get, you know, he had flooring, but it was really a furniture store. That yeah, had and when when we bought this store, it was a cash and carry store. Um, she had carpet and vinyl, large rolls of it, of vinyl and carpet. She handed you a list of installers and um, told you to get the measurements and come back and buy it. And yeah. that's how she ran the business. It was pretty much only in stock of materials. She did not sell anything special order. Well, when we bought the store in November of 85, in, um, we started selling things special order and working. In February of 86, the store was flooded in a 100-year flood. So it was like a, we took a second look at how much we stocked, how much material we had on the floor to get ruined by that kind of thing. Um, and our business just dramatically increased because of the flood. Well, we thought it was just the flood, but uh, for numerous years, we just grew double digits year after year because we started adding more products. We started selling hardwood. We started selling other hard surface products. We um, expanded our carpets to higher end materials instead of just the stock materials and just kind of grew that way. And today, do you guys do in installations in-house or is it really outside? All of our in installations are outside. We um, subcontract our carpet and hardwood 
And then for ceramic tile and stone, we do a list of installers because um, we don't run any of that through the store. So you want to keep an arm's length, so to speak? Right. We that. don't want to be in competition with all of the installers. That so you're going to sell, sell them product because mm -hmm. I, right. I also know that you're a significant, if not the Schluter dealer, right? Or in this area, for yeah. This area, huh? Yeah. We and, are a Schluter distributor. A right Schluter here. distributor. Mm -hmm. The um, last time John and I talked, I believe I heard him right that you guys actually did some construction work through here on some level or insurance work of some type. Yeah, we were, um, we had a carpet cleaning and restoration company that was a separate company that did fire restoration, flood restoration, um, that kind of work. I had a manager that ran that who was knowledgeable. He had been in the service master part of the business for quite a, some time. And he and his wife moved to Oregon. And then um, I kept the carpet cleaning going for a while, but I did not continue the restoration. I didn't feel I was knowledgeable enough to keep, stay on top of that and also run the rest of the business. And so today it's really flooring. Right. And the tile and accessory part of it, that's right. really the, the crux of the business, yes. if you will. Yeah. Yeah. What have you, what have you learned from your time in the business that you think a new person coming into the industry you would like to tell them to look out for this pothole or bump in the roads, try, try to stay clear of that. <laughs> well, I think one of the things to definitely be aware of is a lot of times the person that's demanding and badgering you for the lowest price is also the same job that you're gonna have difficulty completing to their satisfaction. And so not to just feel like you have to go to the lowest price for everything. You need to be able to make a profit enough that you can take care of your customers. It took me a long time to learn that, but I learned that I can't really take care of them if I'm not able to pay the utilities and my employees. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, taking care of them happens oftentimes after the sale. Right? After the sale. I mean, we've had some recent jobs with LVT where they failed. This was in the beginning of the LVT is wonderful phase. Um, I don't know, I think they failed partly because of our lack of knowledge uh, of what the circumstances needed to be for LVT. But the manufacturers came back, uh, maybe it was something going on with the manufacturers, they wouldn't cover anything. Well, at that point, you tear it out and you let your client pick something else and you install it for them and you don't charge them anything. You can't do that if you're not profitable. and. I take the position, often I'm going out to look at the claims. I ask myself, would this be acceptable in my home? And if this would not be acceptable in my home, it should not be acceptable in my customer's home. I think that's a huge clue to making your customers happy. Because if it's something you wouldn't have in your house, then they shouldn't have to have it either. Yep. I, um, we had a very same situation come up recently with us. Uh, one of the big manufacturers had a new line that came out and they're always known for having the style component in whatever category right. they're in. And we got a whole floor about 900 square feet installed. And then as you walk around this room or the two rooms, you could in different lighting vantage points, you would see problems in the finish, but it only was evident at certain angles and certain time of the day. Um, and the manufacturer literally took almost three months to make us whole. But in the meantime, we had to tear it out, get a new pro let the customer pick a new product, right. install it because it, I mean, what are you going to do? Right. Yeah, they have to you go can't. Back. And, and sometimes I look at this job just cost me $3,000, say make up a number an advertising where I'd spend $3,000 and whatever I spent it in would not get me the kind of customer response or co new customers that taking care of a customer does. I truly believe that you're successful if you take care of your customers and not just saying you do, but actually doing it. Yeah, yeah. Bad news travels fast. Yes, really fast. <laughs> the, good, the good news sometimes doesn't get out yeah, very, very out much very, at all, yeah. but everybody hears about the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Can, you know, one of the things that I, I'm obviously maybe, you know, to some of the listeners, not so obvious, but I'm brand new to the industry and um, I found some products that I really loved. And so I'm curious, and that's what really got me in, interested in the industry. Um, what products would you say you've always liked and why? Um, I think in our area and just because of what I like, I really like real hardwood. I like um, the variance in it. I like the nat natural stuff from it. Um, I also enjoy tile because, and when I go to tile, I don't go to natural stone because it just takes a lot of maintenance. There's so many beautiful porcelain tiles out there that uh, just change the room completely and uh, are easy to maintain and that sort of thing. So those are probably my go-to products. If I, I'm looking at carpet, I tend towards nylons. Um, we do sell a lot of wool, but we usually sell an upper end carpet because most of the lower end carpets aren't going to perform for very long. And then people are going to think carpet's a bad deal when it's really that they just have a bad carpet. So, but we're fortunate to be able to sell upper end products where we are. So. Yeah. In our, our store, we never really sold the higher end product um, until I got involved and that's literally almost the only carpet we sell now. <laughs> right. I find myself that way too. Yeah, I mean, I mean, when you show the customer, here's the difference between this and this, you can have anything you want in between. Right. But really at the end of the day, if you're going to the expense of putting new flooring in the house, this is gonna give you better bang right. for the buck. Right. Yeah. Um, and then the touch and the feel and the look of that nicer, I mean, it's just, it's, it's only too obvious once you're given the, the choice, right? Yeah, I just don't think we're always doing our customers best service by not showing them what is appropriate for their home, mm -hmm. their environment. Mm -hmm. You know, if there are two uh, people retired, they don't have a lot of action in their house, maybe one thing is good. But if they're family with kids and dogs, then you need to sell them what's going to hold up to kids and dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what in the, in, in the industry have you been involved in boards or industry adv advocacy groups? I, I remember one time we talked, you were part of a industry association that did training or so I forget I'm what it was. So I'm part of the World Floor Clothing Association, which if you are a store owner, you should be part of it. Um, they have always been, they used to run um, surfaces in the beginning, and then they sold surfaces, made a lot of money. They're a nonprofit. So all of their money goes towards improving the industry. So they are a huge advocate towards um, legislation to help our industry. They, when we had all of the PPL loans and all of that information, they had seminar after seminar and legal information after legal information available for free to flooring industry people. Um, I was on their board for a number of years. I actually was one of the first women that became a chairperson of the board. Um, after that, I was, a, you know, you go to the past chair and all that, um, which are not as active, but they asked me back to be back on the board. So I'm back on their board uh, in a more active position than I was as a past chair. Uh, it's just, to me, they look into health insurance for our industry. They're always trying to find a way to help uh, the independent retailer. And they have education, they have uh, installation trainings, uh, schools that they run. So they do a broad spectrum of helping our industry. And what was the name again? The World, World Floor Covering Association. World Floor Covering. Mm -hmm. Definitely want to make sure we get our guys some of that training and look into it for sure because I, I know we're not a member of it but i but definitely so and I, what's I remember interesting is right now uh last couple of years you can be a member for free it doesn't even cost anything because they're using the funds the, the lots of funds to advocate um letting everybody be a part of it and then when they go to if they have two thousand members versus 20,000 members, it makes a huge difference when they go to advocate with legislation. We have 20,000 businesses that are in our, you know, association. That makes a big difference. 
when they're going to advocate. And are they all across the U.S.? Is that what? Yes, that they the are. Reach? And actually into Canada as well. Wow. Mm -hmm. Where do you see the industry going next? I mean, kind of asking you to forecast a little bit. How do you how do you see the industry taking next steps into the future? Um, I hope one of the things that happens in the future, and I think this last two years has been a prime example, is that we become less dependent on um, resources out of our country, just because there's so much that's coming, whether it's from China or Vietnam or even Spain right now. I mean, a lot of it we can't duplicate in the United States, but some of it we could, like hardwood, because right now everything's getting stopped on the ocean. At the at the you ocean. know, uh, containers have gone up 300, 400% to get it here. Um, and we're pretty much dependent on all of those products that are out on the ocean. There's not very, you know, carpets made in the United States. There are some wood made in the United States and Canada, but so much of our stuff is outsourced that it makes us pretty dependent on uh, having stuff come in. So I'd like to see us maybe have some LVT factories and laminate factories. And, and currently in current environment, I've found people are willing to pay more if it's made in the United States. They, well, and I, yeah. I found that very thing with mm -hmm. Fabrica being one of the products that we sell a lot of now um, because it's, I think people enjoy hearing that it's made right, right. here in LA and you're right. gonna get it right out of LA. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I was was news to me was that Fabrica would actually make custom colors. I didn't know yes, that they until do. recently. Yeah. And we actually sold our first job where a customer was like, hey, I like this style of carpet, but I like the color from this other board. And I want it to be just a little bit darker though, if I could. And um, they do. Yeah, it they helped do. us. It helped us sell the job because the person loved the fact that it was coming out of LA and that they could get it exactly the way they wanted it. Right. And the service from Fabrica was fantastic. Yeah, it's excellent. Um, yeah, so that was... And they make very nice carpet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I the carpet's it's, beautiful. I, um, that's <laughs> the one that I... was what kind of drew me in to the, in, into the business was Cotton Club. <laughs> yeah, Cotton Club. I just showed that the other day. <laughs> it, it's, it, you know, it's a be the beautiful products, beautiful yeah. products. Well, I, you know, I wanted to, I don't want to take up much more of your time. I kind of hit all the points that I wanted to ask you. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time and spending it with us today. And I want to thank you very much. Yeah, well, you're for welcome. Doing that. Thanks. And I just, I want to let you know that if you enjoy your years in the industry as much as I have, you will be very fortunate because it's a great place. You see people in the store and they go, oh, I love my new living room. I love my new bedroom. You're just making their homes special for them and it's it's a great industry to give back to yourself yeah you know? yeah no i i see that every day yeah Pe people get a lot of pride in their house and it's the first you know it's the first thing when you get out of bed in the morning yeah the first thing you do is step on that floor right so if it's a if it's a nice experience when that happens yeah good way to start the day yeah <laughs> thanks janice